to Attacking Third is CBS Sports Soccer Show. I'm Sandra Agreda, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports. Today's episode is brought to you by Delta Airlines. Thank you to Delta for the sponsorship today. What a big event. The NWSL Championship Final has come to its conclusion, and the grand winner is Portland Thorns FC. Thorns defeat. Kansas City current 2-0. What a night. You're here with live reactions. Right on the pitch, Lisa. Live from the field, Sandra. It's loud Yesterday, out we weren't in the field. We were upstairs in the press box. Today, we're on the field. The players celebrating directly behind us. We've got Portland supporters directly in front of us going loud and going crazy. This is unbelievable right now. Um, it's chilly out tonight, but I am feeling so warm from all the energy of these fans. Absolute scenes. We're just happy to be here and be part of it. And joined by you, the audience. We hope you enjoyed the championship final. Let's talk a little bit about how Portland Thorns became champions for a third time in club history. They got started early, Lisa. An early goal by the league and now championship final MVP, Sophia Smith. It took about five minutes for this game to come undone for Kansas City Current. We talked about it in our preview of this match, that the opening 10 minutes of this game were going to be so crucial for both sides. And Portland took that challenge, and they grabbed it by the scruff of its neck, and they chose to just dominate in these opening five minutes. And now they get to celebrate behind us, not only lifting the league trophy, but as you mentioned, Sophia Smith lifting that MVP trophy, and then the captains, Christine Sinclair, Becky Sauerbrunn lifting the league trophy on the stage tonight in front of all of their fans. It's a beauty being at a neutral location and not the higher seed. I know it's a big topic of conversation. I enjoy being at a neutral location because it allows that much more pomp and circumstance around the celebration for either side. And those neutrals that were here tonight, perhaps leaning one way or another, they're now so happy for Portland heading into this one. I'm just uh, absolutely thrilled that everybody watching was treated to the final that we just witnessed. I think it's a very special evening to be participating in this. We've been talking to everybody, it feels like, throughout the build-up to this championship final. And whether it's been coaches or staff or players or fans, supporters, yeah. the magnitude of this event has not gone unnoticed. A primetime Saturday night slot on CBS providing the stage for this epic ending for Portland Thorns. And, and the fans showed up. The fans showed up. I mean, Audi Field was rocking tonight um, from the opening warm-ups until the very final whistle through the trophy ceremony. The, the fans were here. This was one of the biggest showings in NWSL history. It started earlier in the day at the Fan Fest. I mean, the scenes from that event were tremendous. Um, so many players here. I, I believe NWSL Commissioner Jessica Berman noted 60 athletes that were not competing in this championship tonight from the NWSL were here to join in the festivities, to, to watch this game, to be here, to be honored. The OGs honored before this match. Um, and now they, they get to celebrate and watch Portland lift that trophy high for the third time in class history you know I, i'm looking at the crowd here and it's dissipated just a little bit but in the build-up to this uh the attendance was uh, hovering around 20,000. that in itself i think is something that should also be celebrated alongside the champions tonight i believe it's only the second time in nwsl championship history where there has been a 20k mark for attendance at a championship wow. final i believe the last time was in portland Unfortunately, the Thorns losing that 2018 final against North Carolina Courage. But uh, sort of back on top. It's been a little while. It sort of feels, when you say it out loud, 2018, it just feels so long ago. And watching Christine Sinclair lift that trophy, you could just sort of feel the energy. Now let's talk a little bit about her performance maybe in the match. Because when we were doing our preview show, we talked a lot about 
what we might see in the starting 11s, how both teams would start out this match. And we saw from the semifinal coming into this championship final, Christine Sinclair made her way back into this starting 11. She did. She came off the bench uh, late in the semifinal match. And tonight, Rain Wilkinson gave Sinclair the nod at start. I, I liked that switch up. Hina Sugita was the player rotated out for Sinclair as Sinclair got the start. And I, I think it's it speaks to the magnitude of this event. Because you look at a player like Sinclair, who played in the very first NWSL final championship in 2013. And, and this is a player that not only has uh, the pedigree in her name and in her veteran ability throughout this league, but her skill is is tremendous because in the midfield, Sinclair dominated throughout this match. I mean, it, the way that the game just opened up for Portland because of a player like Sinclair, able to move the ball around, draw defenders in. She pressed up high on the counterattack, and that's where Portland really, really got Kansas City stuck in the mud is because they were pressed up so high, and it's thanks to a player like Christine Sinclair. Seeing her stand on the stage and lift that trophy at the very end of it all, it, it gave me goosebumps because this is a player that is the best in the world, right? She has leads the world in international goals scored, and now she gets to celebrate on this type of stage after the career that she's had, after the last several years that Portland has had, because this is the first time they're in the final since 2018, and they get to lift it, and, and Sinclair is a huge part of this win. Well, it's not just veteran leadership, right, that we saw standing out on this pitch. And you're talking about that middle third, and we need to focus there, I think, for a little bit in terms of that's where the game was won and lost it was. a little bit. Let's talk about maybe the other side of the spectrum first versus experienced leadership, right, veteran leadership. You've got rookies stepping up big in big-time moments. Let's talk a little bit about Sam Coffey and what she provided for this Portland Thorns team in that middle third. Sam Coffey is a huge player for Rian Wilkinson. All year, she has been such a standout for this Portland side. We've seen her break her way into the U.S. Women's National Team and get minutes there, significant minutes. And after this win tonight on this type of stage for a player like Coffey, expect many more minutes at the international stage for this type of player because what we saw from Coffey was nothing like we've seen from rookie play before and a, a lot of times players can get to this giant stage that they're playing on in the NWSL championship and falter just a little bit under the pressure and not sure how to control their emotions and understand the game and for a player like Coffee, uh, it was seamless it was really really beautiful to watch the way that Coffee's game from the regular season easily transitioned into this one and the consistency was there which sometimes we can see not be there in such a big game like this but her her movement off the ball defensively to break up anything that Kansas was trying to do in the quick transition and then offensively Coffee with the ball one two touches she's their pivot player in the midfield she switches the point of attack she dictates the play and that's exactly what she did tonight throughout this match I mean she was one of my contenders for MVP of this game heading into the end of it I mean well deserved to give it to Sophia Smith but from coffee I loved what we saw from her in when you look at this Portland side and you look at the midfield with Sinclair and with coffee in there and then how they were able to play with some of their wingers someone like Yasmin Ryan had a huge match standing game tonight from Ryan I liked head coach Wilkinson's commitment to this player, quite frankly. We really saw Yasmin Ryan during the second half of that regular season for the Portland Thorns. Really bring it on in terms of her on-field performances for this team. In the absence of so many international superstars, right? Whether it was somebody like a Christine Sinclair, a Sophia Smith, uh, off on U.S. Women's National Team duty. They had Yasmin Ryan inserted into these starting 11s during that second half of the season and quite frankly provided some new and maybe perhaps now we can call them champagne problems a little bit force the coaching staff into some decision making saying hey i'm performing so well i'm going to force this issue it's going to be a problem it's going to be so hard for you to make starting 11s without me in it and we heard wilkinson say that the hardest part of her job has been formulating her starting 11s and i think she absolutely got it right tonight by having somebody like ryan outstanding wing play mm -hmm. for her uh looking at all of the areas and pockets of space that she was uh, looking to exploit constantly making herself a target uh, in an open in an open area for the extra pass or the extra outlet uh, i loved uh, to, to see it and i think we saw it really 
in that opening goal against oh Smith. Gosh, How yeah. though that front line can sort of stretch things out very, very quickly on this one. You looked at the starting lineup for Portland. We, we talked about Christine Sinclair being rotated in, but the, the power subs that head coach Rian Wilkinson for Portland brought on late in this match, we saw the players warming up. It, it was incredible athletes like Janine Becky, Hina oh Sugita, Crystal Dunn rotating into this match. And it, they weren't game changers in the sense that they needed to come back from behind and get a goal at this point. Portland was up. They were winning. Yeah. They had controlled a lot of this game. And you bring in some powerhouse players yeah. like Dunn and Sugita and, and Becky. When those players came on, were you expecting, like, okay, this is it. This is this is Lisa. a message from Rian Wilkinson right now that this game is not done. They want more goals. Lisa, it was a little mix of both. I said, okay, they want more goals. And I also said, that's a wrap. I said, you're, you're bringing in players in here who, quite frankly, could be starting players on right. other teams across the NWSL. We talk so often about these fine margins between games and how much thinner they get when you get to the biggest game on the biggest stage. And you look at perhaps the, the stat lines and the statistical areas as we were watching this game with about a half hour remaining. The duels won battle between these two teams. Portland Thorns, I believe, had 51 duels won compared to uh, 54 duels won yeah, compared I think it was to 35 to, yeah, 31. By Kansas City, you could just sort of say you're bullying the match at that yeah. point. You are absolutely, you, they were already in control, and then these substitutions come into the game. You're absolutely coming into lock up the game. A player like Sugita, who we've right. never seen live and in action, this was not our first time seeing what she can do on a pitch, but a player like that can just keep the ball from you. And when you are chasing a game as the opposition on the biggest stage at the end of a season, you're probably already frustrated being done. And the fact that you have a player that can come out here and retain this ball and make it even harder for you to try to create and generate offense, incredibly tough night, incredibly tough night for, for KBC. I mean, yeah, Sugito is that player that did step on and just control so much more of the game. You just touched on Kansas City. This was a, a team that had made their way to this championship by winning a quarterfinal match in regulation, by winning a semifinal match over Shield winners O.L. Reign with a shutout, a 2 0 shutout in that match to enter into this game against Portland. And I didn't see Kansas City perform the way that they had consistently been performing over the last several weeks. Just two losses in Kansas City's last 19 games heading into tonight. And now, as they, they played against this Portland side, um, in just their second season making it to the NWSL championship, Portland looked entirely comfortable stepping onto the pitch. And I, I, I think that this stage was a little too big for Kansas City. You know, I don't think that's an unfair statement or comment to make or perspective to have. This, listen, <laughs> we, we've heard Jessica Berman, Commissioner Jessica Berman speaking about this uh, all week, quite frankly, leading up to this game, how uh, she heard a phrase that said that it's this is the toughest league to finish in second place. And I don't think that's any truer than mm -hmm. the game that we saw tonight. If, uh, quite frankly, you have a Kansas City current team just in their second year of existence. And they made it to this stage, perhaps overachieving a little bit and getting here in a timeline of development in which maybe they didn't anticipate. But the journey in which they got here, I don't think was fluky by any means. Uh, you could absolutely see the buy-in by players and to the coaching staff and amongst each other in terms of making the performances that they were producing out on the pitch. And when you get here, this is not unfamiliar territory. We, we often see someone goes home a winner, someone goes home a loser. And despite the excellent regular season performances that a team can put in over the course of the year, sometimes it's, it's not the right day for you. And I feel like that we saw a little bit of that for Kansas City today. I agree with that. But they, Kansas City is a team that deserved to be in this championship. Up until tonight, this was a team that was... Um, 
the, imposing their game on uh, opposition. They were controlling matches. They were scoring goals early, scoring them often, getting incredible opportunities in and behind their opponents. Um, but tonight, we didn't see the Kansas City side that we thought we were going to see. They, they rolled out in a 3-5 with three in the back. And the outside midfielders for Kansas City, between Haley Mace and Kate Del Fava, they were dropped into the back line the entirety of this first half uh, of the game. And after the initial goal coming from Sophia Smith in the opening five minutes, Kansas City was almost deflated and uh, unmotivated after that point. And one of the things about being at a, a neutral location, um, when Kansas City goes to Seattle and plays against O.L. Reign, they know that the, every single fan is cheering for the opposition. And there becomes this chip on your shoulder as that team, that away team, to silence the crowd. Tonight, playing in a neutral location where the fans were split 50-50 between Portland and Kansas City. As soon as Sophia Smith got that opening goal, Audi Field erupted. And it's very hard for a, a team like Kansas City to think, hey, let's silence this crowd because it's not an away crowd. It, they know they're at a neutral location. And that is a mental aspect of this game that I think affected Kansas City throughout this match. And a after the first five minutes, they couldn't get the ball back. They couldn't retain possession of it. They were playing defense constantly, chasing. And when Kansas City did win the ball, there was no off-ball movement to support the player running in behind. It, it was one Kansas City player against 10 Portland defenders. Let's maybe talk a little bit about that go-ahead goal, the goal that perhaps gave the feeling like, okay, they're going to run away with this. Because for a little while, it was 1-0. Going into halftime, if you're Kansas City, you have to anticipate, okay, not our best first half, perhaps a little bit of big stage jitters. Let's get into the locker room, make a few adjustments, and come back out, hit the reset button, and go, go, go. We didn't necessarily see that bit of urgency out of Kansas City going into the second half. And then we see a go-ahead goal that occurs for Portland that was generated by pure chaos, it felt like. An own goal ultimately credited to Kansas City's uh, Addison Merrick. And it was tough to tell at some points during the mm -hmm. angles because of the deflections that took place. Uh, but so not only do you have a go-ahead goal here, the manner in which it happens, I would imagine at that point, if you're already mentally trying to make sure you're checked in the game, that could feel somewhat deflating. So you know, I want to ask you, Lisa, in terms of you know being a defender in that moment, is there any type of adjustment that you can make to try to get yourself back in this game? Uh, we have to we oh, have pause. to notice this pause. right now, Sandra, because we are sitting right next to the field where Sophia Smith has just run over behind us, and the Portland fans are chanting MVP because not only is she the league MVP, she is the game MVP. Sophia Smith, uh, what a, a tremendous game from her! One of uh, the players that did influence so much of this. Um, I'm sorry, you asked me about the own goal Look, from Kansas City. I was distracted by the sights and sounds I mean, around us. That was wonderful. <laughs> this is what we're here to take in and, and, and see. Uh, Sophia Smith, it almost felt like she was going to get that go-ahead goal, but it, it looked a little bit different, obviously, in this moment. Uh, it, ended up being, it ended up being an own goal, and I just yes. asked you to put your defender cap on and just sort of say, like, if you're already perhaps trying to ensure that you keep your mental focus in check. How deflating can a moment like that be for a defender? Incredibly deflating. The way that this play developed, the own goal coming from Portland Thorns, it was Yasmin Ryan, a player we touched on about how big of an impact she had and how hard she made it for Thorns head coach Rian Wilkinson to take her off the pitch. She attacked the space in the flank. She drew defenders, got around them, and then set an incredibly dangerous ball into the box. Because of that, A.D. France tried to make an initial save, but Kansas City defenders out of positioning. They're running towards their own goal. It's Addison Merrick who actually ends up kicking the ball over Franch, the Kansas City goalkeeper, and it finds the back of the net. And a moment like that is is truly devastating for a team like Kansas City, who's coming off of an incredible defensive game that they had in the semifinal, and to to squander away an own goal in that type of manner when there wasn't even that much pressure from Portland attackers coming in as as the ball was crossed in. You have to give the four stone goal to Addison Merrick, or excuse me, that was the own goal to Addison Merrick. But you have to give the four 
first own goal to Yasmin Ryan for Portland Thorns because without that darting run down the flank, without the dangerous cross into the box, um, Kansas City still only looking at a one goal deficit at this point in the game. A game at that point in which Kansas City had plenty reason to believe that they could get one back. They had small glimpses and moments of, of bright attack. Nothing that was consistent enough, nothing that strung together enough momentum for this Kansas City Tide side. But when you look back to the, the regular season that this team played, there were those small moments where Kansas City would break through and get a goal. And I, I believe that this team had hope and had faith in themselves until they conceded the own goal. Yeah, that's a tough moment. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> to really say the rough. least. Yeah, I, which is why I wanted to get your uh, perspective on it. And I know when we were watching the game live in real time, we had we were trying to take a look and see if it was something off of the defender, if it was a de deflection off of uh, French. Who honestly, we should we speak a little bit about uh, in this game, in the in the lead up to this game, uh, Adriana French having an MVP caliber type of year for Kansas City. It's uh, it, unreal to think that tonight there could have been more for Portland Thorns, but you have somebody like French in net, someone who's not unfamiliar with the Portland Thorns franchise and, and, and their ruthless attack. How did she uh, fare tonight, you think? I think French had an okay game. Neither of the goals were her fault. Oh, no. Uh, um, the, the opening goal that Sophia Smith scores in the opening five minutes, it's a mistake on Elizabeth Ball, center back for the current, who ends up slipping, and it, it's a bad pass back to French, and then Smith is 1v1 with French. And in that matchup, I'm going to give it to Smith every single time. So it's not the opening goal, not a detriment to French. And I don't think we saw her head drop after that opening goal. The second one, also not a mistake by French. She yep. comes out to clear it. Her defender ends up kicking it back at her and goes in. Now, it, it, I wouldn't be shocked if French ends up making one of those saves because that's how impressive she is as a goalkeeper. And that's why she was MVP caliber, goalkeeper of the year caliber, heading into the playoffs this year. However, I, I don't think tonight she had a lot of help from the defense in front of her. And in order to do it all herself, it was tough for French. Were you looking for a, a tactical adjustment at all in, in, for, for Kansas City coming out of, of this game in uh, halftime? Yeah, I mean, the opening 10, 15 minutes of this match, Kansas City was playing with five in the back instead of their traditional three. They were, they were playing the defensive side of their formation the entirety of the first 30 minutes. And because of that, I, I was curious if Matt Potter was going to be able to shift into a four back. And that's not something we had seen Matt Potter do a lot this year. So it would be asking a lot of his team to switch into that four back. And, and you and I even talked about live during the game, who could Kansas City bring on at that point? What changes could they make to kickstart this team? And uh, unfortunately, losing a player like Claire Lavogé in the quarterfinals of this playoffs this year ends up tearing her ACL. She was a missing piece and a missing factor for this KC side. Yeah, there was one point when you or I were taking this game in up in the box, and I said, you know who they're missing Lisa Lavoge. so I mean you look for that I think maybe perhaps we could say that something like death came into play yeah for these it, it two did. teams uh, you know I know in our preview we chatted a little bit about that and I looked at that as maybe one of my X factors for this game and we saw Wilkinson able to just sort of make these rotations as she as she saw fit and uh, it almost felt like anyone could have came in and continued the momentum for this team because it was all Portland tonight. It was all Portland, controlling every single minute of this game. I, Kansas City looked tired towards the end of it because emotionally, mentally, physically, um, it was a rough game for those players to play in after going down early. And Portland just dominated. They continued to gain confidence throughout this match. We saw Sophia Smith taking on more and more players throughout the game. We saw the rotation coming in, especially from Hina Sugita, who had an incredible shot it late in the first half and when you look at at how this team unfolded and the way that they played throughout the 90 minutes we weren't sure if it was going to end in regulation and Portland was positive when they stepped on the field that it was going to end in 90 minutes. A remarkable night at the NWSL championship final Portland Thorns winning their third championship in club franchise history. Congratulations to Sophia Smith League and NWSL championship finals MVP. That's it from us here at Attacking Third tonight live at Audi Field. Thank you all so much for joining us.
You guys did so good with all that screaming going on. Oh, it's I tried fine. to get him back at No, no, it's oh, fine. No, it was no. fun. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Okay, so now what? We go to another show? Now we go to the booth. You guys did so good. Nailed it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we can do it again. Alright, we're all good. Uh-huh. Oh, here, let me get this off here.